Will Chamberlain is the greatest center of all time, and I want to talk about his offense for a second, but before I do, make sure you like and subscribe because I'm about to say something very controversial. Are you ready? Will Chamberlain is a better offensive center than every other center ever. Now, I'm going to make a case for it. Give me a second, right? I'm going to use context. First, I want to talk about context, right? And, and then I'll explain why I'm bringing this up. But contextually speaking, in Will Terra, the game of basketball was playing different than it is today or than it was in the 2000s. I don't think anyone would disagree with that. The way the game was officiated and the rules of the game were different as well. The reason I'm bringing this up is for several reasons. See, today we can see a player like Nikola Jokic and we see the praise that he gets because he's an A, he can shoot the ball, he can post up, he can score in the post at ease, he dominates the players inside, he can play, make, he can pass, he finds cutters, he, he's phenomenal, right? He's a complete offensive player. So we praise him for that and he deserves it. But if I took him and I put him in the 60s and I say, hey, there is no more three-point shot, right? There is no more Michael Porter Jr. or Jamal Murray to pass out to. Okay, and guess what? The lane is much tighter. It's harder to get the pass through. So are you going to play the same? Is he going to play the same? No. And Oh, wait, wait, wait. Here's a better one. Jokic no longer can post up at the level that he's posting up now because he's not allowed to back down in the post. And not just that, but he's playing much better defenders on a daily basis. Right, Going from playing Rudy Gobert once or four times a year to playing Wilt Chamberlain, Nate Thurman, and Bill Russell 30, 40, you know, 30 to 40 times a year is pretty insane. Right, That is a big difference. So if I told you that if Nikola Jokic played in the 60s, he would not be considered the greatest offensive center ever by most modern fans. You know it's true. You know that's not false. Now, better yet, let's talk about Shaq for a second. Shaq got a lot of praise. Before Jokic had this insane rise... Shaq was the greatest offensive center ever. But if I told you that Shaq, as dominant as he is, right, and getting all those double teams and passing out to wide open threes and hockey assist and doing this and that, would not do that in the 60s because the players, right, there's no three-point line, first of all, but the game was much tighter and you were not allowed to back down in the post. You were not allowed to put your weight into people's shoulders. You were not allowed to back down aggressively and throw elbows like Shaq would and get dunks like that. And fans would boo the dunks. And secondly, those dunks would shatter the backboard, which would be frowned upon because they didn't have extra ones at the time. So even the way he dunked the ball would be different, which is just kind of interesting. But if I told you all that and then I told you, that alone would make him not be viewed as the greatest or even top two greatest center of all time offensively ever. Right? Would you disagree? Absolutely not, because you know it's true. Now, Kareem is a different type of conversation, so I'm going to talk about him in a second. But my point is, Wilt Chamberlain played in the 60s. So the same rules that I just told you and said, hey, if these two players played in that era, they would not be the greatest offensive center ever, which you probably have to agree with, right? So why do we criticize Wilt so much? If I told you, hey, people complain about his passing ability, but in the 60s, him posting up and passing out to a wide open shooter was terrible offense because you're going from a 45% fadeaway, contested fadeaway, to a 39% jump shot. That's bad offense, right? And that's at worst. That's Will's worst offense was a 45% fadeaway, contested fadeaway, right? Most of the time he was getting wide open layups or wide open dunks, drop steps, spins, going inside and dominating in the post. And people criticize him because he would not pass out every single play for wide open shooters. Now, he did it every so often. Obviously, every, every player does it, but it wasn't an efficient play. Now, instead, years later, you'd realize, oh, I can do this handoff and give it to them in the mid-range in this corner. Their efficiency there is pretty high. Okay, that's a smart play, Will. Good job. But still not as effective as you going inside and dominating. Better yet, he realized if I hit cutters and they make layups, that's great offense. Now, that was great offense from the beginning, right? And he did that the entirety of his career, but he took a focus on it as he got older. But see, we don't praise him for that. We criticize him because statistically speaking, he averaged way too many points and not enough assists, even though two things, assists were harder to get credit for in the 60s, especially as a center, because you would only get assists if the pass, the, I'm not even playing when I say this, if the pass led directly to a layup, that's when you would get an assist. It was very hard to get an assist when you would pass out to an open shooter, right? Oscar Robertson talked about this and he would know because he led the league in assists every year. You see what I'm saying? So... Why are we so harsh on Wilt and his offense based on some silly footage without contextually putting the errors into play? 
because what was not allowed to play. Now, I know, uh, what's his name? Ben Taylor started using some of the clips where it says that Wilt did not like to go in there and break people's arms. First of all, we should not, we should never criticize a player because he doesn't want to hurt other people, right? I know people love praising Shaq, but like, dudes, no, right? And secondly, that's a silly argument because it didn't stop him from being dominant. When it says, I didn't like hurting people, it's probably because he didn't want to break their arms. But if he would have done that, y'all would have criticized him either way. So what's the point? So I say all this to say that Will is really the best offensive center ever because he's the best scorer ever, right? He is the best or second best passing big man ever. And he's the best playmaking big man ever because within his era, he created more shot opportunities than I believe Jokic or Shaq would have been able to. I don't think Jokic would have gone into the 60s and been able to average nine assists a game. Not, I'm just being honest with you. Yes, he would have the passing ability still, just like Tom Borwinkle, right? Now, he would be way better than Tom Borwinkle, but he would not be able to create the opportunities like he is today, which is kind of the point that I'm making, right? Tom Borwinkle did not have that ability to create as much as Jokic would, but he could still pass, so he still got his assists. Jokic would still do the same. I think Jokic would average six and a half assists or seven, you know, maybe even seven. But I don't see him getting eight or nine, not 10 for sure, right? That's just the kind of criticism. Maybe Jokic is taking the slack for it, but I'm just being honest with you. Now, I mentioned Kareem. Let's talk about Kareem. Kareem played in the 70s. Now, Kareem was fortunate enough, in my opinion, and the big difference between them is Kareem didn't play as many great defensive centers as Wilt did, which sounds harsh, but... It's the truth, right? If you look at the percentage of the centers that Wilt played against, Wilt played against Hall of Fame centers in over 49% of all his career games. His regular season. I mean, think about that. I I, I could look into uh, Kareem's stats, but I guarantee you it won't be 40%, right? And he had greater offensive uh, point guards around him for a majority of his career. He had Magic at the end, and he had Oscar in the beginning. Wilt never had that. And so... That is kind of the reason I wouldn't put Kareem there. But even then, by the way, you can take everything I said and use it for Kareem. I, I think Kareem would be number two. If I had to be honest with you, I would put Kareem number two. I really would. Right? Because if Kareem played in the 90s or 2000s when the three-point shot became more of an emphasis and it was like, hey, you can pass out to a wide-open three-point shooter. Oh, my goodness. That would be essential. Right? If, if they all four of those centers that I mentioned played in today's NBA... Jokic would be the worst. <laughs> Not offensively, I think Jokic would be number three. But Kareem would, and Wilt would easily be one and two. You're not stopping those two dudes. Shaq, you're not stopping either. You, he would be number three. My goodness, if I told you Moses Malone would be a better... I, I, no, I'm playing with you. Moses Malone would not be a better offensive player than, than Jokic. But that's it. I kind of rambled on a little bit too long i apologize but i i hope you guys enjoy it maybe i made a couple points that you agree with but if i did god bless you jesus loves you died on the cross for your sins put your trust in his blood thank you guys for watching and see you later